Once on a time, a monarch stirred with hooping, whipping and spurring, happy and worrying. A poor, defenseless, harmless buck, the horse and rider wet as muck from his high consequence and wisdom stooping entered through curiosity the cot where sat a poor old woman and her pot. The wrinkled, bleary-eyed, good old granny in the same cot illumined by many a cranny had finished apple dumplings for her pot. In tempting row the naked dumplings lay, when lo, the monarch in his usual way like lightning spoke, what is this, what's this, what, what? Then taking up a dumpling in his hand, his eyes with admiration did expand, and oft did majesty the dumpling grapple. "'Tis monstrous, monstrous, hard indeed,' he cried. "'What makes it pray so hard?' The dame replied, low curtsying, "'Please, your majesty, the apple.' "'Very astonishing indeed, strange thing.' Turning the dumpling round, rejoined the king, "'Tis most extraordinary than all of this. "'It beats Panetti's conjuring all to pieces. "'Strange. I should never of a dumpling dream, but goody, tell me where, where, where's the seam? Sir, there's no seam, quoth she. I never knew that folks did apple dumplings so. No, cried the staring monarch with a grin. How, how the devil got the apple in? On which the dame the curious scheme revealed, by which the apple lay so sly concealed, which made the Solomon of Britain start, who to the palace with full speed repaired, and queen and princesses so beauty scared, all with the wonders of the dumpling art. There did he labor one whole week to show the wisdom of an apple dumpling maker. And lo, so deep was majesty in dough, the palace seemed the lodging of a baker. What is an apple dumpling? We come to historic recipes with a modern take, with, through our modern lens, and sometimes what we find is very surprising. I grew up eating apple dumplings. Anybody in the area of the country that I live in the Midwest grew up eating apple dumplings, and they look something like this. I had my mom make this for me for this video because her apple dumplings are my favorite apple dumplings. And growing up, it was just my favorite dessert. Every birthday, she would make me apple dumplings. When I was little, she'd put like candles in there and stuff and it was really fun. But it's better than cake for me. It's better than anything else. Apple dumplings, that's great. So what I wanted to do is look into the historical cookbooks and see, did they have apple dumplings? What were they like? And it's kind of surprising that they don't pop up everywhere. I'm, it's not really hard to find them, but it's not nearly as popular as something like an apple pudding or an apple pie. And we have all of these different variations of what can happen within these apple desserts that basically use the same ingredients. So that's something I want to dive into a little bit later. But first, we got to talk about the recipe that we're cooking today. The recipe comes out of the art of cookery made plain and easy by Hannah Glass which is from 1765. And this is a great cookbook if you're wondering, what's the, what's the entry cookbook or what's the first one that I should get about 18th century cooking? It covers a lot of different topics. There's a lot of different kinds of food in here and it's really, really easy to read. So this is a great contender if you wanna get that first cookbook. So to make apple dumplings, make a good puff paste, pair some large apples, Cut them in quarters and take out the cores very nicely. Take a piece of crust and roll it around enough for one apple. If they are big, they will not look pretty. So roll the crust around each apple and make them round like a ball. With a little flour in your hand, have a pot of water boiling. Take a clean cloth, dip it in the water and shake flour over it. Tie each dumpling by itself and put them in the water boiling, which keep boiling all the time. And if your crust is light and good, the apples not too large, half an hour will boil them. But if the apples are large, they will take an hour's boiling. When they are enough, take them up and lay them in a dish. Throw fine sugar all over them and send them to the table. Have good fresh butter melted in a cup and fine beaten sugar in a saucer. So that's the recipe. The reading sounds long and kind of complicated, but it's really not. We're gonna quarter this apple after we pair it. 
we're basically just gonna make a quick little dough, cover the apple, put it in a floured kitchen cloth, just like a boiled pudding if you've seen one of those on the channel before, and throw it in the water. It's gonna be really quick, really easy. Let's get started. Our pudding is boiling over the fire. It wasn't a huge apple, but it will take some time. So we're going to take, I don't know, about 45 minutes. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about apple dumplings in the time period and what's going on with them, because it's kind of hard to find a rhyme or a reason. Now, like the poem said earlier that I read at the beginning of this video, I really do think that a lot of what makes it an apple dumpling is that it doesn't have a seam. It doesn't have this area where you can see where the apple has been covered. And like when you would fold it together and it would bake, kind of like a modern apple dumpling, but it is just boiled in that bag or in that cloth, or in some cases a net. In that way, there's no seam whatsoever in the dough. Now there are apple pies, apple pasties, apple dumplings, apple puddings, and sometimes it's kind of hard to say this is what this is because eh, they can be interchangeable. And we've got to remember that in the time period, we've got a lot of different cultures that are coming together here in the U.S. And most of these things, these cookbooks anyways, are French or they're English. But still, there are different cultures that are colliding. And you don't always know, does this culture call it this? And does this culture call it this? And the way that these cookbooks are compiled, normally they're begging and borrowing recipes from other places. So it's kind of hard to tell where everything is coming from. There are several examples of apple dumplings that are very much like the one that we've made in this episode, where there's an apple and it's either uh, wrapped whole or it is cut into quarters or halves cored. If, the, if it's wrapped whole, oftentimes they want you to boil it and then later cut a hole in the dough and pull out the core, which is really interesting. I don't know why you would do it in that order. Sometimes there's even a stuffing or some butter or marmalade or something like that that goes down into the hole where the core was. So all of that is basically the same thing though. It's an apple that's wrapped in a, in a paste and then boiled. This is another way that you can make an apple dumpling. And this one is from the Practice of Cookery by Mrs. Frazier. And that is, let me see here, 1795, so 30 years later than the one that we use today. But this apple dumpling is really interesting because it wants you to take a puff paste like we did, and it wants you to pare several apples and then cut them up. And it wants you to take a bowl, line it with the paste like we did with the sea pie episode, if you have seen that. Dump all of these apples in there and then cover it and then wrap that whole thing up in the cloth. So you're making like a giant apple dumpling that is almost like an apple pie because it's filled with all of these different 
cuts of apples, which is completely different, but also very similar, right? We're making like a, a small personal size to one of that today, and this would be one to feed a lot of people. Now, I saw an apple dumpling recipe that was really just an apple boiled pudding. And the funny thing was it wasn't even using apples as an ingredient, it was just currants, but it was supposed to be the size of an apple, which I, the way that they name things sometimes can make going through these recipes very confusing. Um, they'll oftentimes have the, the reference for the size of the pudding as the title. So you're like, oh, here's an apple pudding. It doesn't even have apples in it. It's just the size of an apple. What we also have going on here is just like apple desserts overall. It seems like all the dumpling recipes that I find are to be boiled. Now, if you have something that is um, to be baked, usually it's a pasty, or this is a really interesting recipe from the professed cook, and it is, is for apples festooned. So apples made fancy, and then this, you make your paste and you put your apples in and you cover it with another paste like a pasty where it's making this little pie, but then you cut it out where it was something that's got a decorated edge and then you take and you cut little leaves out of the dough and you stick those on so it's a fancy little apple dish. And it's like probably really close to what a modern apple dumpling is depending on if you have those baked or fried, which wherever you live, you might know them as one way or the other or both. In the art of cookery, which today's recipe came from, there's a recipe for an apple pudding. And in that you're taking all of these apples, like a dozen apples, and you're pairing them and you're mixing them all up with butter and you're cooking them and you're putting a little bit of eggs in there and then you're baking it. And it says at the end, you can use puff paste, but you don't have to. And I just find it really interesting that all of these dishes, it, sometimes it seems like the names are interchangeable and they're all using the same components, but they're going about it in a different way. And when you come into it, it doesn't seem like there's a rhyme or a reason, but I know that there's something here. And I think that the main thing to keep in mind is that in the time period, an apple dumpling didn't have a seam, it was just boiled with this dough around it. Now that is nothing like the apple dumpling that I grew up knowing. And I'm excited to dig into this in a moment and see which one is better or if they're even comparable. The apple dumpling that's baked that I grew up with and that I love or this 18th century version of an apple dumpling that's been boiled. I like boiled puddings. I've never had one that I didn't like. So I'm really excited to find that out. Our apple dumpling is finished. It looks really good. Very different from the one that I grew up with. This has a flaky biscuit-like crust. This one has, it's like a boiled pudding type of crust where it's almost like, I don't know if it's a crust or a paste or what you would describe it as, but it's a little more dense and kind of, I don't know how you, dense and mushy at the same time in the best kind of way. So. Let's dive in real quick. Let's see what this tastes like. It's got plenty of sugar and butter. I'm gonna try to get the apple and the crust and the sugar all together. And it's kind of hard to cut with a horn spoon, believe it or not. Mm. 
that's really, really good. Um, the apple texture is interesting. It's almost like it turned into applesauce. I mean, it's really, really cooked. It's not like what an apple pie has. And that's kind of what this has going on for it. And I'll cut it open so you can see, but you can still see individual apple pieces in this, unlike this one, where it's all just kind of like a paste, it's applesauce, it's, it's, it's gone, they're obliterated. And then it's mixed in with butter. This one doesn't have any extra butter, the butter's in the crust. So let's take a comparison taste real quick. Now this one feels like coming home and it's not fair. There's no way in my mind this one can win because this one is, this is like the taste of my childhood. But what I do like, it's, it's, it's not even about the, the crust, I don't think so much as the apples. The texture is completely different. This one, there's still even a crunch to the apple pieces. This one, it's all applesauce and I like them both. And if you've never had a boiled pudding that is an apple dumpling, apparently, which is kind of crazy to say, you should really try it. It's, it's really, really good. Um, I would be happy with either one of these. So one thing I'm wondering is in the comment section, maybe you can let me know if you grew up with a different idea of what an apple dumpling is or apple desserts that you liked, because depending on where you're from, things can look a lot different. I know that in the Midwest and in the fall, even on the East Coast, there are lots of harvest festivals and those oftentimes you have these like deep fried uh, apple dumplings. So I, I didn't eat a ton of those growing up. I've, I've had them, but this baked one, this is definitely where I come from. I set out today to answer a question. What is an apple dumpling in the 18th century? I think we narrowed it down. It is a seamless boiled apple pudding of sorts. And, and it's gonna change a little bit depending on where people are coming from. But what I do know is that if it's got a crust and it's got apple filling, I like it. And uh, that's really all that matters to me. Both of these are fantastic. If you haven't tried any kind of boiled pudding before, this is a really great one to start with. And if you'd like to see another recipe where we compare something that we know in a modern sense to how it was made in the 18th century, check this one out. Thank you for joining me today.